back with financial expert Chris Hogan and more from his latest book, Everyday Millionaires. Before the break, I asked this question. Stocks have been a little bumpy lately. Should I liquidate some of my investments to cut losses? We all remember 2008, mm. where you know we were like, yeah, invest in the stock market, invest. And then a lot of people lost a lot, and they had to start all over again. Yeah. So um, if things start looking bumpy, do we yank it out? Or is this the whole point of stocks and, and the whole bit is that it, it's, it's for the long haul? That's well, a couple of you. things here. Yeah. I mean, bottom line, this is why we talk about once you get out of debt, you need an emergency fund. Three to six months of expenses setting aside in a, in a money market account. So when you do have an emergency, you can deal with things. Second thing on this, this is why I don't like single stocks. Mm -hmm. Single stocks are just too volatile. Eggs in one right? basket. It's like going to yeah. Vegas, right? I, I, last first time I went years ago, everybody on the plane was so happy, right? They had this expectation they were going to go make money, right? Yeah. On the flight home, two days later, <laughs> it looked like a funeral. <laughs> yeah, but, okay? yeah, but, but here's the funny part. Because people will go, oh my gosh, <laughs> yeah. I got a thousand dollars. Yeah. I go, but how much did you spend? Right. Five $5,000. Yeah, right. yeah, yeah. They look like they needed a yeah, hug. Right. Okay. So the reality is, is this: if things are looking tight, what I want you to do is first and foremost look at tightening up your budget. Um, it is the roadmap to everything financial. Be intentional. Plug the leaks where you're wasting money. Right. Be intentional. If you do have some stocks, I want you to talk to an investment professional. I want you to look at how to back down from that. You need to be aware, though. Anytime you cash out a, a, an investment, you have a gain. So it's going to cause some tax movements. So don't cash out anything as a knee-jerk reaction, leave it alone, go get with an investment professional with the heart of a teacher, and let's start to understand the options. Right. 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 Okay. Uh, Fatima has a question for us. Hello there. Good morning. Good morning. Um, as a current college student um, who in high school or college has not had any personal finance classes, what kind of advice do you have for recent high school or college graduates who are uh, now beginning to start their life in uh, managing their personal finances. And let me ask you a question real quick. What did you major in? I am currently a senior at University of Houston majoring in nutrition. Okay. Okay. So, young people, right? This, I wish I could gather them all up and guide them so we could avoid some of the mistakes right. you and I have made right. and everyone else has made. Uh, the big thing is, is understanding that you have to be in control. Right? You don't want to start to just down this path of this deserve mindset. Mm -hmm. See, when we graduate, I felt like I deserved another car. I deserved and deserved and deserved. Mm -hmm. And the problem is, is you, don't, you don't end up deserving the sting that debt brings. <laughs> yeah. So I would say breathe and let's learn the basics. Budgeting, getting out of debt, saving and investing. Those four things will set you up on an incredible path. You almost so act just, like you're still a college student, yeah, right? Yeah, you have to slow way down. You know, we know this is important. We have what's called the foundations curriculum, where we're teaching it in middle schools and high schools now. Also on college campuses to help people start off right. See, the problem is, is if you start off on the wrong foot, mm -hmm. or you start off with student loan debt and 15000 in credit card debt, then you go out and grab a house and then a car payment, mm -hmm. what you've done is just put yourself down in a and hole. That's exactly what I did. That yeah. it'll take 15, 20 years to dig out if you don't know how. So I want people to avoid some of those pitfalls. And I've got a, we've got a book. Dave's first book, Total Money Makeover, was a game changer for me. Yeah. And I'll make sure I get a copy for you. Aww. Yes, ma'am. Yeah. Yes. I felt so deserving. I said to my boss, my first job, I said, I need to make at least a thousand dollars a month. And he goes, really? I said, yeah. And he goes, well, I was going to give you 2000 a month, but now that you said 1000 that's <laughs> that's even better for us. But, yeah. but uh, OK, so on the whole college thing, that's another thing is that, that whatever colleges you know, kids choose to go to, I think we just think that you have to just go. And you have to go to a certain college. One of my friends, I asked uh, her why her daughter was insisting on this one college. She goes, uh, well, hello, they have a great football team, but your girl don't play football. That's right. <laughs> right? That's right. So and it's, what are you majoring in? That's and we right. all know in college, of the first couple of years, a lot of it's the repetitive stuff from from school. So yes. do you have to go off to that four-year oh, university thank you yet? for bringing Can you up. just do the, the junior college? Can you live at home? That's right. U of H is, has such a great, is a great school here in town. Yeah. And so many times kids, if they grew up in the city, think they have to go away. U of H is right down the street. That's it's right. It's amazing. You bring up a couple good points, okay? 62% of the millionaires that we studied mm -hmm. went to a state public university, mm -hmm. all right? 8% of them went to a community college. 9% didn't graduate at all, mm -hmm. okay? So there's a lot there. You don't have to go to an Ivy League school. You don't have to take on a boatload of student loan debt to put yourself in a position to be successful. So you mentioned community college. Mm -hmm. Go there and knock out those prerequisites. Knock out the English, the math, the language, mm -hmm. all of those things. And then you can transfer to a four-year institution and graduate in two years. But please, parents out there, don't forget, scholarships and grants are available. Yeah. You don't have to forsake your own retirement to help little Johnny or Johnette, right, go to college. <laughs> 
You don't need to do that. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Okay. And there's nothing wrong with I worked three jobs. And I, I, I worked three jobs through school, That's right. right? So, you know, if you work, I knew how to manage my time. Right. And so the whole bit. Well, okay. studies have shown people that are working while going to school are better at time management and have better grades. Mm -hmm. You've got priorities straight. Right. So you can work during the day, go to school at night. Right? Work, work at night, go to school during the day. It's an option. All right. Uh, we're going to go to break, but our next question is going to come from Rhonda. And so, Rhonda, what's your question? Hi, Chris. Hi, Deborah. Hello. My question is that I have money all over the place. So oh, I good started for you. out. No, no. <laughs> it's not a lot. <laughs> I started out at 22, making $25,000 a year as a school teacher here in Houston. And I contributed to the teacher retirement system. Then later on, I went to law school, and I was working at a law school in administration, and they set up a retirement account. And I think it's similar to a 401k or 403b, I'm mm -hmm. not sure. And I also contributed to, um, I don't even know what it is, some sort of um, retirement vehicle mm -hmm. where they have a salesperson come in during your lunch break. What do I do? Yeah, with, all right, what do you do? money okay. all over the place. Yes. Okay, yes. we're gonna give you an answer when we come back. Thank you.